He is up in heaven. He is up high. Can you think of somebody right now that is underground, characterized by a river? There was a rock group several years ago called Styx. Nobody knew what the name of that was. The word Styx was the Greek term for this underground river that flowed through hell. And so I want you to begin to get this concept that they said that God is an underground river and all of these religions are wells from which this stream comes forth into people's lives. Think about the setup and think about where we're going this. Now, it goes on to say, connect, to connect with the great river of mysticism, we all need a path. But when you get down there, there's only one river. What I'm doing is connected with the East. I have a Hindu from India teaching Shakta Yogi in my program. We teach Tai Chi and Aikido. We have Sufis, Buddhists, Jews, Catholics, and Protestants, and witches. So the future of religion is interdenomination. And remember, they're teaching this Arcadia, this grand underground stream. And I'm going to show you what that stream is that all of these wells of all these different religions are tapping into and up rising up from this underground stream is this new god it's the god of the new age it's the antichrist masonic author manly p hall said many ancient mystical traditions speak of a god who was cast into a river and is awaiting the day when he will rise from the river these gods he says were all worshiped with the wine of ecstasy. Think of that wine again and think of drunken states. Manley Hall goes on to say the Egyptians also believed that Osiris, which is the, the sun god, was the river Nile. Now Osiris in the mystery languages is none other than the beast, the Antichrist, the one who rises from the sea. Ezekiel chapter 29 verse 3 says, Speak and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh king of Egypt, who is a type of the Antichrist, the great dragon that lieth in the midst of the rivers. So get this concept, this underground stream that all of these religions of mysticism is talking about is none other than the beast himself who is underground, who is going to rise up one of these days. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. So now we're seeing a connection here. Contemplative prayer is nothing more than a setup to get church people into accepting 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. He sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is the mystery of iniquity. That the, the, that the Apostle Paul was referring to. Now we're going to look at some of the promoters of contemplative prayer, and your eyes are going to shoot right out of your head. You're going to see something that you've never seen before. You're going to see some people promoting this deadly, dangerous practice, people that you probably prayed for, listened to, followed, sent money to. You're going to see some of these people. Now, again, this list comes from Lighthouse Trails Research. You can go to their website. I hardly recommend them as, as, as far as a source of contemplative prayer. You have names like Elise Bailey, an occultist, founded the Arcane School. Ken Blanchard, founder of Ken Blanchard Companies and Lead Like Jesus Leadership Conferences. You know, that sounds Christian. Brother Lawrence, a, a practicing monk. Jack Canfield, creator and author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. Larry Crabb, Christian clinical psychologist. Uh, Tilden Edwards, founder of the Shalem Prayer Institute. Richard Foster, Quaker and founder of Renovare. Matthew Fox, former Dominican priest. Thomas Keating, a Catholic monk. Dan Kimball, author of The Emerging Church. Brennan Manning, former Catholic priest. Barbara Marks Hubbard, an influential New Ager. Brian McLaren, who is one of the leading names in the emerging church movement, is a pusher of contemplative prayer, and he practices it himself. Thomas Merton, now deceased Roman Catholic monk. Henry Nowen, deceased Catholic theologian. M. Scott Peck, psychiatrist and author of The Road Less Traveled. Robert Schuler, pastor of Crystal Cathedral. Agnes Sanford, author of Healing Light. William Shannon, New Age biographer. Wayne Teasdale, coined the term inner spirituality. Teresa of Avila, we talked about her earlier, Catholic nun. Evelyn Underhill, Roman Catholic author of Mysticism. Neil Donald Walsh, author of Conversations with God. Rick Warren, 
pastor and author of The Purpose Driven Life. Marianne Williamson contributed to Making a Course in Miracles. Mike Iaconelli, late founder and owner of Youth Specialties. Mark Iaconelli, son of the late Mike Iaconelli, very active in the contemplative prayer movement. Henry Blackaby, author of Experiencing God. Bill Hybels, pastor of Willow Creek Community Church. David Jeremiah, pastor of Turning Point Ministries, author of Life Wide Open. He was a speaker at Ken Blanchard's Lead Like Jesus Seminars and American Association of Christian Counselors. He is openly endorsing contemplative prayer. Max Lucado, you've heard of him, Sue Monk Kidd. Uh, Beth Moore, founder of Living Proof Ministries for what for Women. Watchman Nee, mystic author of The Spiritual Man. John Ortberg, Eugene Peterson, author of The Message Bible. And I submit to you, if you've ever read The Message or seen our videos on them, you will know that The Message is none other than a New Age version of the Bible. And I believe that Eugene Peterson contemplative prayered familiar spirits into his life that led him to translate the Bible in this way. Uh, Peter Singh, a Buddhist, author and founder of Society for Organizational Learning, a New Age movement. Michael W. Smith, promoter of Brandon Manning's book, Above All. Charles Stanley, Southern Baptist evangelical pastor, author of How to Listen to God. He espouses the belief that God continues to speak to man today outside of his word. In the 993 In Touch magazine, Stanley quotes favorably from mystic Richard Foster's book, The Celebration of Discipline. Andy Stanley, pastor, spoke at Ken Blanchard's Lead Like Jesus conference in 2005. Chuck Swindoll, evangelical pastor of Insight for Living, author of So You Want to Be Like Christ, Eight Essential Tools to Get You There, a book on the solitude and silence of contemplative prayer. John Michael Talbot, a Christian musician who's also a Roman Catholic monk. And the list goes on and on and on. And I'm telling you, if you'll just start watching for some of these people, eventually, it's going to, they're going to come out of the closet in endorsing contemplative prayer. There was a video that circulated. You can still buy new copies of it called Be Still and Know That I'm God. Remember that phrase. Remember what we said about it earlier. This video endorsed by Henry Cloud, Richard Foster, Max Lucado, Beth Moore, and scores of others did nothing but promote this stillness prayer, this silence prayer, contemplative mystic Christianity in video form, which everybody, you know, when you use videos, you, you reach a lot of people, and that's exactly what has happened. And now we have thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of church members all across the country promoting contemplative prayer. Another organization, Youth Specialties, owned by Zondervan, you, through Youth Specialties, and many other youth-oriented organizations, our youth are being taught to treat the Bible as a meditative vehicle rather than a source of knowledge to further our understanding of God. In their magazine called Esoteric, which I'm going to stop right here. The word esoteric, you know what that means? Secret knowledge. Their magazine actually is called Esoteric, a book of secret knowledge. In one of their articles, they, they had an article called Teaching Dreaming Language to Young People. And the article goes on to say, one way to help your students rehear a passage is to use an imaginative prayer exercise. It allows students the chance to imagine themselves inside biblical narratives as characters or witnesses to the story in order to help them think through and experience the stories of, and, of scriptures and God's role in these stories. And they go on to say, we want to help you open your students up to a new encounter with God's word. So here you'll find a free exercise from imaginative prayer for youth ministry. And all the youth groups, and these youth groups now in churches are huge. It's a youth, this is a huge ministry, a multi-billion dollar ministry, uh, industry in this country. And going into the youth groups, through the youth pastors, through the literature, and churches all across this world, they're teaching them new age Christian mystical practices where young people, and you're going to see this in a minute, they're not hearing the voice of God. They're hearing a different voice of a different God, and I'm going to show you that from the pages of the Bible. One of the main writers, as we mentioned earlier, for Youth Specialties is Mark Iaconelli, and he's a regular featured speaker at Youth Specialties National, National Youth Workers Conventions, and he actually wrote the book on contemplative youth ministry. 
Here is what one of the authors of From Youth Specialties wrote concerning their own prayer practice. He was teaching in a seminar and he was asked the question, you're going to teach us to meditate? That's right, I said. Isn't that New Age or Buddhist, she asked? Well, Buddhists do meditate, and there are many New Age meditative prayer practices, but what I'm going to teach is Christian meditation. I silently promised myself never to use the word meditation in a public Christian setting ever again. What's the difference, she asked? Well, on the surface, nothing. The approach to meditation for a Buddhist looks an awful lot like what I do. The difference is the reason we're doing it. The Buddhist empties the mind for the sake of emptying it. The Christian empties the mind to fill it with Christ. He later goes on to write about his inward journey. He said, Therefore, I was largely alone in my explorations. I was tired of debates with classmates who accused the disciplines of being occult practices, so I started using the phrase listening prayer when I talked about my own experiences in meditation. I built myself a prayer room, a tiny sanctuary in a basement closet filled with books on spiritual disciplines, contemplative prayer, and Christian mysticism. In that space, I lit candles, burned incense, hung rosaries, and listened to tapes of Benedictine monks. I meditated for hours on words, images, and sounds. I reached the point of being able to achieve alpha brain patterns. I'm going to show you what that is in a little bit. You, you just, you're going to flip out. The state in which dreams occur while still awake and meditating I made many journal entries of my prayers, thoughts, and dreams. Now, I want you to get this. Here is one of the editors, writers for one of the leading youth ministry publishing companies in the world. And he just revealed to us that he goes into a little place. He lights candles. He hears Benedictine monks chant. He chants. He goes into an alpha state, an altered state of consciousness. He practices what everybody in the New Age practices, transcendental meditation. He practices that, and then he writes down his insights, and I promise you those insights are being fused into the curriculum of what's ending up in our Sunday school rooms, our vacation Bible schools, our Bible commentaries, these people are standing behind are standing behind and influencing the people that are standing behind the pulpits. And I'm telling you, they're not hearing from the Holy Ghost of God. They're hearing from some other spirit. Nav Press came out several years ago with a magazine called Pray Kids, Adventures with Jesus in Prayer, promoting contemplative prayer, calling it going to the next level. In this, now this is for children. In this article, they quoted Brother Lawrence, who was a 17th century French monk who is best known for his example of the contemplative life. He practiced God's presence in every minute of his day while working as a monastery cook. The secrets of Brother Lawrence's devotion to God apparently lay in his hearty renunciation of anything that did not lead to God, his belief that God was the beginning and end of all his thoughts and desires, and his conviction that prayer was nothing more than than the continuing sense of God's presence. You Specialties also promotes what's called deep breathing, a practice used often in New Age meditation techniques, yoga, and hypnosis. Now, we mentioned Rick Warren a while ago. This is a direct quote from Rick Warren's book, The Purpose Driven Church. Look at what he said. Many Christians use breath prayers throughout their day. You choose a brief sentence or a simple phrase that can be, here it is, repeated to Jesus in one breath. You are with me. I receive your grace. I'm depending on you. I want you. I belong to you. Rick Warren wrote something that is in direct contradiction to the Word of God, where Jesus told us to not use vain repetitions in our prayers. Rick Warren says, use these vain repetitions and pray them to Jesus. And in doing so, you will hear the voice of God on the inside of you. Moving into the churches across America, things like Lectio Divina, Logos Meditation, called Sacred Reading, a slow meditating on a portion of Scripture without exegesis or analysis. In other words, without thinking. This is similar to a chant used in yoga. In fact, yoga is one of the fastest growing movements among these contemporary modern churches right now. All of these pastors, all these pastors' wives, all these youth groups, all these people are now having yoga sessions inside of the house of God. They are hearing from some other God other than Jesus Christ in their houses of worship. Let's learn a little bit about yoga. Here's the cover of a book that I have on Kundalini Yoga. Now, I'm going to explain Kundalini here in a little bit. 
This is from the Divine Life Society, and here is how they define yoga. The word yoga comes from the root yuj, which means to join, and in its spiritual sense is that process by which the human spirit is brought into 